Hello, good morning, class and students. I hope you have read the previous lessons. Yes. Did you complete your previous part of this chapter? Okay. Therefore, today we will learn about the next part. That is transfer of heat. Heat energy always flow from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature till both attain the same temperature. This phenomena is known as transfer of heat. Heat always flows from a body at higher temperature to another body at lower temperature. In other words, heat always flows from a hotter body to a colder body. As a result of heat flow, temperature of the hot body falls, then that of the colder body rises. This flow of heat stops when temperature of the two bodies becomes equal. Therefore, the flow of heat from one body to another or from one part of the body to another part of the same body is called transfer of heat. So, we can define transfer of heat in this way as well. Please pay attention. Flow of heat from one body to another or from one part of the body to another part of the same body is called transfer of heat. That is why we feel warm if we sit near a fireplace during winter or if you go near the burner you will feel warm. Now let us see how heat is transferred. There are three ways in which heat can be transferred from one body to another or from one region to another. They are conduction, convection and radiation. In this video, we will learn about conduction of heat in solid. Following is an activity through which it will be more clear to you. For this activity, we need the following materials a thin metallic strip or rod, some iron nails, wax and an iron stand. First of all we will take a long thin metallic strip or rod and will fix a few nails on this strip at equal gaps with the help of the liquid wax. As you can see in the setup. Here is the metallic rod and nails are previously fixed on it. Now we will clamp this rod to the stand. This is the stand with the clamp. So we will fix this rod to a stand with clamp and then we will place a burner below the free end of the rod. Now as the burner is hitting the rod then slowly we will see the nails start falling one by one as heat travels to the rod. Please see the order in which the nail is falling down, the nails are falling down from the rod. What is the order? We will observe that the nail nearest to the flame drops first, then the next and finally the nails which are farthest from the flame. It happens because as the heat travels gradually from the hotter end of the metallic rod to its colder end, the wax melts gradually 
and the nails fall down one by one in this order. This gradual flow of heat in a solid from the hotter end to the cooler end is known as conduction of heat in solid. So from this activity we can conclude that heat travels through solids by conduction. That is why if you hold a metallic spoon over a flame you cannot hold it for longer time isn't it as soon the heat travel from the hotter end of the spoon towards your hand you have to leave the spoon quickly it is because in solids the constituent particles are very closely packed they can only vibrate about their mean position. So when one end of the metallic rod is heated, the particles at that end absorb energy and start vibrating. These rapidly vibrating particles collide with their neighbors and transfer a part of heat energy to them. As a result, Next particles also start vibrating more rapidly and cause their neighbors to vibrate more. This process continues until the last particle also start vibrating rapidly. Thus heat energy is transferred from particle to particle through the whole length of the rod from the hotter end to the colder end. Now I think it is clear to you that what are the conditions for the conduction of heat in a solid? There are two conditions. Number one, the object should be in direct contact. Number two, the object should be at different temperature. In this activity, we can see that the temperature at the two ends of the rod are different. Therefore, there is transfer of heat from the hotter end towards the cooler end. So, in nature, all materials can be classified as materials which conduct heat and materials which do not conduct heat. So, the materials which conduct heat may be good conductors or poor conductors but both are conductors of heat for example silver copper aluminium iron brass stainless steel these all are good conductors of heat whereas water air glass these are poor conductors of heat because they conduct heat very slow Whereas some materials do not even allow the heat to flow through them like wood, paper, glass, asbestos, bakelite. These are called non-conductors of heat. Air, plastic, rubber, these are used as insulators. So, materials may be conductors or non-conductors. Now let us see how these good conductors and non-conductors are useful in our daily life. Both are useful for us. Like the materials which are good conductors, they may be used wherever we need fast transfer of heat or quick transfer of heat. Can you see such an event? Yes, you are right during cooking. While we are cooking, we need to have quick transfer of heat. Whereas the materials which are non-conductors, 
are used to prevent the transfer of heat. Now we will see what are the uses in this following section. Like good conductors, for example, metals and their alloys are making are used for making cooking utensils. In our daily life, we need different types of cooking utensils. Whereas non-conductors are used for making the handles of that those utensils. Now it's very easy to understand, isn't it? That why the handle of the cooking utensil should be made up of a non-conductor. For example, a saucepan has a handle of non-conducting material like bakelite while its body is made of a good conductor like stainless steel. So this handle helps us to handle the material, handle the cooking utensil easily. Non-conductors of heat like brick, asbestos sheet, mud, these are used in house building so that these do not allow the outside extreme heat to enter the house during summer. These materials during winter also do not allow the heat to escape from house that is to go the heat outside the house. Again, many insulators contain tiny pockets of trapped air in them to prevent the transfer of heat. Yes, you are right, we are talking about wool. You know already that woolen cloths do not allow our body heat to escape out during winter. It is because of the trapped air in between them. You have one more activity in your text to show that different solids conduct heat to different extent. Yes, it is right that different solid materials transfer heat at different rate. In this activity, three rods made up of iron, copper and glass are used. In the same way, we have done the previous activity. So after this activity, we will see that copper and iron conduct heat whereas glass rod do not. Also copper conducts heat more faster than iron. So in case of copper wire, in case of copper rod, nails will fall down faster than the iron rod and in case of glass rod we will see no change in the situation. Therefore by this activity we can conclude that heat transfer in solid varies from material to material. Now students let us learn how do woolen clothes keep us warm during winter. Wool fiber is porous in nature which has holes or pores in them. Therefore, it has air trapped inside these pores. Air is a non-conductor now we know. Air is a now non-conductor of heat. So, it does not allow the body heat to escape or go out to the surrounding air. As a result, wool keep us warm during winter. So, it is very essential that we should put on woolen clothes during extreme cold. So at the end of this topic, let us try to answer these following questions. For example, a spoon is dipped in a cup of hot milk. Suppose you are supplied with a cup of hot milk along with a spoon dipped in it. From your daily life experience, can you say 
what happens in that case yes if you touch the spoon that will also appear heat you will feel heat uh, you will feel hot right so now can you name the process by which the spoon absorb heat from the milk yes you are right it is conduction because the spoon is in contact with the cup therefore it will also become hot due to conduction of heat question number 2 mention a condition that must be satisfied for heat transfer by conduction i guess you can answer this question number 3 what determines the direction of flow of heat between two objects in contact yes you are right the condition is the two ends or two objects should have difference in temperature question number 4 which property of a solid is employed when it is used for making the handles of pressure cooker yes what is the answer answer is the solid should be and should it be conductor or insulator yes it should be an insulator question number 5 please tick which of the following is an insulator so these are few oral questions at the end of this topic and your today's homework is please follow the class properly and learn the definitions needed thank you meet you in the next topic